What would you advise to a young woman who's not married, who gets raped, but does not have access to an abortion as I think that's something that you believe in? No abortions, right? Yes, and pro life, yeah. Okay, so then what would you advise that woman to do? Okay, so first of all, I, I do appreciate that you've created the saddest possible scenario for a living woman. <laughs> um, is, she, is she also disabled? Uh, and, <laughs> and so it's really the whole hog, and she has breast cancer as well. Um, so it's, as long as we're creating imaginary victims. Uh, but, it, it, but, you know, the answer is that that doesn't actually change the calculus, meaning that obviously what happened to this person is an awful, awful, horrible thing, and as I said earlier, the person who raped her should be tracked down, captured, killed or castrated. Um, so that's number one. As far as the morality of abortion, the morality of abortion does not change based on need, right? So the fact that she's poor and needs an abortion doesn't change whether she was rich or needs an abortion or poor, because the abortion argument really comes down to do you think this is a life or not? If you don't think it's a life, you can do whatever you want with it. If you think it's a life, you can't do anything with it. As far as what she does with the baby, that's up to her. You know, if it's obviously going to be an obvious economic burden, I would think that there are a lot of people out there like me who would give charity in order to try and help out somebody who's obviously in that sort of situation. And there are charities that exist for people like this to try and help out. And if you know of this woman, tell me her name, and I'm happy to give her some money. Okay, the, the, the idea that she, what about the health of the mother? So my view on abortion, again, the morality of killing a baby does not change as long as the baby's not actually threatening the life of the mother. In the cases where the baby threatens the life of the mother, like for example, you have a case where a woman has actual breast cancer and she needs chemotherapy and she's pregnant, but the chemotherapy will abort the baby, which actually does happen, right? That, that is a case where the mother should, I think, be able to get the treatment. That's not the same thing as an abortion. Uh, so they're actually treating the mother for what she's got, and the byproduct of that is that the baby is terminated, the baby's killed, basically. Uh, I do think that it's important to note two things. One, the solution to something horrible happening is not another horrible thing happening in the killing of the baby, which I think is actually horrible. And two, and two, it's really not good to take the marginal case and then use that to argue broad. So what people tend to do is they say, well, what about the girl who's raped? What about her abortion case? So now let me ask you, if the girl weren't raped and she just got pregnant, would you think that she should still have access to an abortion? I do because I think it's her body and I think it's her health. Right, so you're giving me an out, so you're giving me an exceptional case in order to prove a rule that you don't actually want to defend. So you're, if, you, if you just come up and ask me, do I think a woman should have an abortion, then we could actually have an argument about, or discussion, about in what cases an abortion was appropriate. But you always, say, this is what people on the pro-choice side, the, the anti-life side, actually do. What they actually do is they take the marginal case, they take the, the raped, you know, woman who has a severe disability, and they say, this is all abortions. That's not all abortions. Significantly less than 1% of all abortions are performed on women who have been raped. So if you want to talk about the epidemic of abortion in the country, over a million abortions performed a year in the United States, let's talk about the other 99% of cases. When you are willing to agree with me that the other 99% of cases are not cases where abortion should be necessary, then I'm willing to have a discussion with you about compromise. But I don't think that's what you want. I think that you're just using the exceptional case in order to try and guilt me into supporting a broad based abortion platform. These are, these are two separate issues. These are two separate issues. Sympathy for the woman and sympathy for, how about a little sympathy for the child? Okay, at any point does sympathy for the child come in here? You say, I don't, you say I'm not compromising. I'm the only one in this conversation who's expressed the, the willingness to take money out of my own pocket and put it in somebody else's. So have you donated Planned Parenthood then? What was that? Oh, have you donated Planned Parenthood? No, because they kill babies. No, they don't. They, they kill 300,000 unborn children a year. No, I don't donate to a, a baby genocidal organization. Like 